Okay, my friends, you are in for a treat as I am. Now, I had been going back and forth with Don Lincoln from Fermi Lab, you know, showing him that we accelerated light. We created the muons and the electron neutrinos and the electron showers, precisely what they want to see. That's their doodle, not mine. But we did exactly what they wanted. And now my claim is that photons muons, electron, neutrinos, fission, fusion, gravity, dark matter, I have solved all of these with that, with our light experiments. And we, I also believe that we may be able to, and I'm not saying we can for sure, but we should invest two or three weeks or a month to see if we can create a, an excess of energy using this Venturi. Nobody's ever expected this, and now everybody's doing it. Every, literally everybody. And Don Lincoln still will not pay any attention to me. And his own family lab, they're upgrading their magnets to focus just like we focused. And I tried to explain this to him. So I told him, I said, Don, it's going to come to a point I'm going to have to come after you on the internet. And he says, take your best shot. I said, okay, well, let's do it, buddy. Now, just to address this way we can see these images, and this is a smartphone. It's a Samsung Galaxy S3. And this goes back to 2012. And this is what Rod used to do it. Well, I did too. This is mine. Rod's in Australia. But we used the exact same equipment, him and me. And he just was much better at it than I was. And he, he worked at it much harder than I did. I had a lot of stuff going on. And he, I'm sure he did too. But he just he's very persistent at this. It was six, seven years we worked on this. Now, this particular phone, and he said he uses the selfie part, I guess. He said it works better than the other one. Now, I can understand that to a degree because you're, you're right up close, so you're going to have a lot more pixel. In other words, I don't know whether it's the software that's working with the pixelization that gives you that really fine look to it, or it's something else. That I can't say. But this is the phone, and this is 2012. And they say that they use the same technology as the high-end multi-million dollar observatories. The apps basically transform these phones into a high-energy particle detector. It uses the same principles as a very large experiments. And what they're looking for is these um, the muons. And here it is right there. When the particles crash into Earth, they create shower secondary particles called muons. So they're looking way up in the sky and seeing these particles. We're right on top of the interaction of the particles. And we could see them with stunning detail. And this goes back to 2014. We were doing it even before then, I believe. I'm not sure. But for sure we were doing it by 2014. And they, they say the physicists turn smartphones into cosmic ray detectors. 2015, I was showing all of our work so I would say probably we started before that I don't know I can't remember now it's been a long time you see this I don't know if I showed you this before but they're talking about this has just came out later this decade they're talking about 10 years from now this will be upgraded to do the same things we're doing to create luminosity which means particle physics of photons basically they're going, they're doing photons but they're still trying to work with protons and it's not the way to do it the nucleus is made of the tiniest particles which are light particles and we divided them listen to this now scientists engineers technicians at CERN and around the world including Fermi lab Brookhaven National Lab Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and all of, all of them and these are these are the uh, Department of Energy Office of Sciences High Luminosity LHC Accelerator Upgrade Program, building new focusing magnets. They're all focusing because now they realize if you crush them together and f force the beams into, it, it creates a ton of energy in a compacted space. That's the whole the whole idea of, of looking at this. It's not just banging them together and hoping you hit something. And that's what they've been doing for years and years. Boom. And they go flying in every different di direction. What we want to do now is focus them through the way I showed it. Instead, they still want to go face to face. Not the way to do it. All right, this is a big one because you could, we could create new materials with lasers. Look, physicists startled to discover a new way to shape a material's atomic structure with light. This is the nucleus, and they're talking about the atomic nucleus. So 
is exactly what we've been showing. And th those sprays of particles are what create a nucleus. If you could put 50 of them back together instead of 100, you have a whole new element. And they're talking about X-ray laser expellent. Intense light s distorts the structure. And the intense light is from the focusing. And everybody else is doing the focusing, too. Hold on one second. All right, here's another one right here. This just came out a couple days ago. The Large Hadron Collider physicist just revealed that CERN scientists made a massive discovery. Well, what did they discover? And look at the equipment they're using. They discovered X particles, which is the particles I'm showing you, and they just don't ex understand them. Now, listen to what they're saying here. Bonds and quartz collided forming very few, very temporary. Wait a second, let me just get a little louder here. Let me back it up a smidge. Well, you know what? Let me back it up a little bit further here. I hate to drag things out too long because it's... The, the things that they say are just... It's amazing how they make these assumptions. I should start it right from the beginning, but you should come up here and watch it. It's unexplained mysteries. All right, well, now, here we go just after the Big Bang, within less than the first second. They think these particles originated within less than the first second of the Big Bang. Now, the Big Bang is, is also a big question for me. But yes, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, these electrons are around everywhere. Now, do they, do they grow? I can't say they don't. How do they know that? How do they know that every particle that was made came from a Big Bang of nothing? How could you possibly make that assumption? But they do. Here it goes. This means that they were around when the universe was at an overwhelmingly high temperature, trillions of degrees, and was filled with quarks and gluons. These are elementary particles which, once they cooled, became the protons and neutrons we learn about today at school, which are significantly more stable. Okay, which... They're almost in the right area. They're talking quarks and gluons. They're actually the, the little particles I showed you, the electron neutrino and the muon neutrino. Those are the only particles that exist that I can determine. It appears before the temperatures dropped, giving us protons and neutrons instead of quarks and gluons, there was a short period where a few of the gluons and quarks collided, forming very few, very temporary X particles. We st These are the, the black and white particles I'm showing you, which is like the sterile new, uh, um, muons. I believe that's probably what they're referring to as the sterile muons. Still do not know exactly how the elementary particles formed the X particle structure, but if we are able to somehow find an answer to this, then we will have a far better understanding of these particles that made up the early universe. Alright, <laughs> I'm showing to you those particles we don't need this stuff to see them and they're talking about in the next 10 years they should be able to see the particles i showed seven years ago you know here's another one just came out we need new physics e equals mc squared must be the most quotable equation in physics everyone's heard of it and has been proven time and time again no it hasn't and they're still trying to work with that and they they're trying to stay with Einstein and the speed of light and all this stuff. No, it doesn't work. I could show you, and I will. That it is, you can speed it up. You can slow it down. It's made of particles. They split. They do all this stuff. And they're talking about in the next 10 to 20 years after upgrading all of their electron colliders, they're ch ch making a new... They're going into the same stuff we did. It says what the nucleus looks like at high energies is still very much unanswered, explains Brandenburg. And with this discovery, we've developed an entirely new technique, which is focusing the beams of, of particles. And they say this has made it possible to use polarized light. All right? They didn't even know po light was polarized, which is the black and white particles I showed you. It says it demonstrates the photons are polarized and how we can actually measure that polarization. Well, I don't know if the, how they're going to measure it because it changes depending upon what, what it's concussing into. I'll show you the polarization right now. Now, here's right here from the Royal Institution of London. These are the top guys in the world. Using lasers to create fusion and save the world with Kate Lancaster. Now, I looked at this and they, they're going to use high energy lasers, but what they're going to do is focus them in on something that has a lot of extra electrons and blow the electrons off with these high energy lasers. Well, we are just going to squirt the lasers themselves 
and make them turn into the particles way more efficient than what they're doing so but it's still there's they're they're getting into the right realm fusion and fission using lasers lasers to create all kinds of these new particles lasers to actually create new elements they're starting to understand the the basic of basis of the nucleus is these tiny little particles but they still have a zoo they call them of particles because they don't understand that everything is made of the same particle and that same particle is this okay light is light and that is light from a pulsed red laser and light is basically they don't even know what light is they don't know if it's a wave or a particle or they don't even realize that it's coming from the sun to the earth I mean, I'm not kidding you. They don't realize the vacuum of space is filled with these particles. And what are the particles? Are those particles right there. I think I've shown you probably just 10,000 times over the last years. It's just absolutely amazing. And you can slow it down. You can speed it up. Light is no one-shot deal. You see how it's open up here and it's real combined up there? It's actually coming down this way. It's coming in fast and as it, this is right out of the venturi, and as it hits the other part of the, you know, gases in the air, it, it, it slows it down. And it's the same thing is happening in space. The Hubble Space Telescope is not telling us anything of value, as far as I'm concerned, of distances. It says over 10 billion light years out there. How do they figure that? They say, well, because light only travels at a certain speed. Mm-mm, not correct. It travels slower, it travels faster, I can show that, and I can accelerate it in gases, not even in a vacuum. So we can plow through the gases, and that's why you have all this distortion of the magnetic field as it pulls itself right through its own magnetic field in through these gases. Now, in a, in a vacuum chamber, you may not even see the magnetic field swish back because there's really nothing to concuss with. It just keeps going. But if you put it through a venturi, these fields have fields. I don't care if they're in a, mag in a vacuum or not. They're, you're going to still get that acceleration. So we may want to use a vacuum tube when we create these energy harvesters. And like I said, we should be able to create energy right there from the fission. The black and white particles break. I'm sure I showed that. I've shown this stuff so many times, I just get so confused now, so many times over and over. And those black and white particles separate. And now they are separated right there. That is the plasma they're talking about. If we can harvest that plasma, I mean, it, that's just, that's energy on steroids. And you can see it is. It's not hard to understand this. Look, look, just take, take a second and think. Back here, there was almost no concussion value. Almost none. And that's all energy is, is concussion, is impact value. That's all it is. Now, all of a sudden, we accelerated that particle. Now we got a different issue. And when we stacked it up, it smashed so hard that all we can let through is the white particles because of the design of the Venturi. It's extremely finely tuned to only allow the white particles through. And the black all had to go around. There's not one taste of, of black in that region and that is exactly precisely what CERN Fermilab all of them want to see and we did it seven years ago so I I cannot accept any longer that they will allow this to not be seen I mean it's obstructionist science to be perfectly honest with you I presented this all over the world and then they say oh we presented like you showed it yes how do you present something I can't just run in there and and force them to, they won't, wouldn't look at it. So my presentation was, I kept sending it to everybody that was involved. And I'm sending it to the people that are involved today. And Don Lincoln is one of them. And, and you know, like I say, I don't hold any grudges. I just want to get this done. And we can get some free energy right there. And this is all we got to do. Again, I'm showing it probably 10 times in this. The laser shoots it out. We get the plasma. We get the free energy. And it's just totally free. And these are all solid-state devices. They, you, they just sit there and run forever. You don't have to put anything in them. Drive your cars, airplanes, boats, trains. We save the environment. And I have shown, and I believe I have proven all of these. And if anybody wants to stand in front of me and debate me or discuss this in a very respectful way, I can do that. But I need somebody to stand in front of me and discuss this. 
And Don Lincoln, I think, is the one that is, should be the one. And I, I, like I say, we do it on a Zoom meeting. I'd be very respectful, but I present my evidence and have him say, well, that's not right because of whatever he says. And then I'll say, well, let's discuss why you think it's wrong and why I think it's right. That's science. What we got now is dismissal. And Don, I told you we were going to get to this point, buddy, and it's, the point is right now. You said take your best shot. And I said, okay, here's my best shot. I, I can love you, my friend, but I'm finding it a little hard at this moment. <laughs>